It happened to me yesterday when I was once again being late for work. As always, I rushed down the stairs and burst into the subway station next to my home. The train was about to leave, and as if in slow motion, I saw its doors closing. I made a wild dash, expecting the doors to open up as I was squeezing through. Well, to cut a long story short, it didn't happen, and I got stuck. The doors just wouldn't open as they used to before. Luckily, some kind fellow passengers rescued me from the door trap, and I arrived at work on time. But as soon as I finished all the urgent work, I made a coffee break and sat at my computer to Google why my morning accident happened in the first place. It turns out that there are two types of subway train doors out there. The first type is the doors with kinda sensitive edges. It means that as soon as this door detects an obstacle, such as your leg, elbow, or even your bag, it will immediately reopen. After you have squeezed through, the door will either close again automatically, or the train conductor will press some buttons to make it close. But there are doors that aren't equipped with sensitive edges, and I guess the ones where I got stuck on my way to work were of this second kind. They don't retract automatically when meeting an obstacle. Oh no, they just keep pressing on whatever has been unlucky enough to get trapped in between them, which was me this morning. The good news is that such insensitive doors won't do you any serious harm. There are some standards for how forcefully the train doors can close. And if everything goes as it's supposed to, you shouldn't feel more than 45 pounds of force if you get trapped in the closing doors. Unpleasant, but not that bad. But this information got me to thinking. Why don't they equip all subway doors with sensitive edges? I would easily survive without an additional thrill of being squeezed by merciless subway car doors. But again, it turned out that the issue was more complicated than it seemed to me at first sight. For one thing, if something goes wrong with the retraction mechanism, the doors with sensitive edges can open during the trip, accidentally spilling people out of the moving car. Besides, if people keep squeezing through sensitive edge doors, making them open again and again, it will disrupt the whole train schedule and create terrible human jams. And finally, the more additional gizmos you add to a mechanism, the higher the chance is that something goes wrong with it, or it breaks down. For example, sensitive edge doors may open up accidentally if they come into contact with something that shouldn't be in their way. Well, all things considered, insensitive doors might not be such a bad idea. Anyway, while I was browsing the internet in search of answers, I came across some other cool information about the world's subway systems, including some travel tips. To find an unoccupied seat on a subway train, opt for the very front or the very back car. You'll thank me later when this crafty approach saves you from being squished during the rush hour or some other busy event. The tube that's how you call the London Underground System, is the oldest subway system in the world. It opened its underground railway in 1863, and the first electrified line appeared in 1890. The world's second oldest subway system is in Budapest. The Hungarian Metro opened in 1896. In March 2013, more than 1,200 Japanese workers turned an above-ground train line into a subway line. It was a huge operation, demanding an immense amount of work. But the inhabitants of Tokyo didn't even notice anything unusual. The construction took place during the train line's off hours and was completed within one night. The time limits were extremely tight. The last train arrived at the Shibuya station at 1 a.m., and the first morning train was to depart at 5 a.m. But four hours turned out to be enough for an army of engineers and construction workers to organize everything and even run a couple of test trains. In New York City and London, there are buildings that are actually nothing more than huge dummies. There's nothing behind them, since they are just facades hiding subway maintenance and ventilation systems. Speaking about New York, many subway stations have separate entrances for trains heading downtown and those traveling uptown. And once you've swiped your card and got inside, you won't be able to simply change the platform. You can't get a refund, and problems escalate if you bought an unlimited access card. In this case, you'll have to wait for 18 minutes before you can use it again. Is the situation with separate entrances the same in your city? Sound off in the comment section below. In the city of Cincinnati, Ohio, 
there is an almost finished, never used, and eventually completed abandoned subway system. With more than 2 miles in length, it's the biggest abandoned subway system in the US. The construction started at the beginning of the 20th century, but the cost turned out to be too high, and the project was left unfinished. The safest place in case of emergency is inside the subway car. But if you absolutely have to leave it, look for blue or white lights. Blue lights indicate a place with a telephone, fire extinguisher, and a power-off switch. As for white lights arranged in a circle, they show where an exit to the street is. Cities in Greece have massive problems with building subway systems. And no wonder. Every time they start digging a new line, they come across some ancient ruins. Guangzhou, a city in China, has no subway system whatsoever just 22 years ago. But look at this wonder nowadays. The subway system of the city has an astonishing 257 stations and 14 lines. Almost 500 trains transport from 8 to 10 million passengers every day. In total, the length of the subway system is about 300 miles. Subway trains in Montreal have brake shoes that are made from wood soaked in peanut oil. For one thing, these brakes are rather quiet. Plus, they wear out metal wheels less. What's more, experts say that wooden brakes are eco-friendlier than steel or graphite ones. New Yorkers are often too busy to waste time looking around. They need to board a subway train as fast as possible. But those few who dart a glance at the train conductor usually notice a very curious thing. At the stations, a subway conductor would always point their finger out of the window. And if you follow the direction of this finger, you'll see that it's always the same. In the middle of each subway platform in New York City, there is a striped black and white wooden bar. If this zebra board is lined up with the conductor's window, this lets them know that it's safe to open the doors. And it's crucial, because if the train stops in the wrong place, either its rear car or the front one may end up in the tunnel and passengers won't have a platform to step on. But conductors must not only look at the board, but also point at it with their finger. This way, they prove that they're paying attention. You aren't allowed to eat or drink on subway trains in Washington, D.C. The reason? You may stain carpets that cover the floor of most subway cars. And the authorities will have to spend extra money to clean them. And finally this. The New York subway system has the world's biggest number of stations. 472 in total. And here's a bonus. The famous Duke Ellington's band's signature tune, Take the A-Train, is based on a real New York subway line. It's the train that would take you up to Harlem, where the cool jazz clubs once were.